So, here we all sit, staring at our favorite team, face to face, eye to eye, asking them bluntly, why are you trying? You aren't true contenders. And when they say they're still gonna try their best and see what happens, we just shake our heads. Because if you're not close to the chip, slam that ejector and buy your ticket, baby. It's the Victor Wembenyama sweepstakes. It's a name we've heard on countless scouting reports at this point. The kid, standing at 7'4", is now a pro in his hometown country of France and taking the rest of the world by storm. Victor Wembenyama is known as the best prospect since LeBron James, some even daring to say he's even better. The lanky center has dazzled the Metropolitan's 92 crowd with his impressive ball handling, shooting, finishing, interior blocking, physical attributes. Do you see why we're all talking about him? So today, let's take a look into some of Victor's potential new homes in the US. Here are my top 5 teams that I would like to see partner up with a young star. Although let's be real, he'll be ridiculous wherever he goes. Quickly, I'd like to give my honorable mentions. The Orlando Magic sadly did not make the cut because honestly, I already love watching Banchero run this team with Franz as his wingman. Their current young core has a good chance to be sneaking into play-in battles already this year, so won't have as high of odds as many other picks. The second are the Utah Jazz. They've started this season hot, but honestly, I just don't get excited about anything when I look at this roster. I want to see Vic head to a team that already has bright pieces to put with him. Sorry, Utah, but you already had your French center. It's time to move on. Okay, now onto the top picks. First off is a team I see higher in other people's list, but for me, this feels more right. Will the Oklahoma City Thunder be a fascinating team for Wembenyama to go to? Sure, I can't deny it would be fun to watch as a fan. Do I have my doubts though? As much as I can for a team acquiring Victor. Positives first. Just think of the lengths of that team. Their starting backcourt already features 6'6", Shai Gilgeous Alexander, and 6'8", Josh Giddy. Two versatile playmaking slashers that would easily assist the 7'4 big man with every lob or kick out three his heart desires. Opponents night in and night out would be tasked with fumbling through a logjam of limbs. Plus, the two playmakers would set him up for easy bucket after easy bucket. And then of course, we get into the currently sidelined future frontcourt mate, Chet Holmgren, also a 7-footer, is known for his shot blocking and versatile offense at his time at Gonzaga. But now with his rookie year postponed, the Thunder drastically increased their odds to get Vic. But here's my case as to why the team is only number 5. I want to see Chet play. I want Chet to have the chance to help build OKC into something in the future years not immediately get sent to be Victor's backup. Because let's think about it for a minute. Are we sure we love them playing at the same time? Those two, side by side, would bring the already mentioned length of the team to a ridiculous level. But do you really want your big men to both be that skinny? Shot blocking and interior defense can both go hand in hand while also being distinct talents. A player can be a great shot blocker but find themselves getting pushed around inside a lot if they're not careful. Someone like Mo Bamba comes to mind who, oh look, is a tall skinny center. Chet and Victor together could block as many shots as they want, but at least at this early age would continually get pummeled trying to guard the likes of Embiid and Giannis or boxing out Steven Adams. Also, Chet's already injured for an entire season. As impressive as the guard moves are from the lanky big men, injuries seem to haunt them. The original unicorn himself, Kristaps Porzingis, has been plagued with injuries since leaving New York. If I'm Victor Wembanyama, I want to go to a team that has some strong arm centers to play with so they can help alleviate the physicality and lower injury until I bulk up. If I'm the Thunder, I roll the dice on the Thin Towers combo and play fast and light. Fourth, we have a team that has been searching for, frankly, even just an average big man while still having some veteran centers to help ease the defensive burden, the Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan has been so desperate to find someone to put down low for his franchise that the team traded for Mason Plumlee two years ago for virtually nothing. 
because the Pistons did not want him. The six and a half rebounds per game career averaging center was swapped for the 57th pick in 2021. But now, if Victor landed in Buzz City, the strain would have all been worth it. Charlotte has been playoff competitive when Gordon Hayward has stayed healthy. Although that means without him, they plummet in the rankings. With a healthy squad, Wembanyama could jump this team up to relevancy on day one. Then, although we know Victor can clearly handle the ball himself, who wouldn't want to share the ball with a flashy young LaMelo Ball? In his second season, Ball was an all-star and averaged 20 points and just under 8 assists. Together, the two young prodigies could overpower head coach Steve Clifford's sickening determination to play vets over rooks and bring the future of Charlotte to a new level. Next is arguably an organization pick rather than a pure current roster construction one. No one on earth doesn't trust the San Antonio Spurs, unless you're Kawahi and his uncle. Developing stars like David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Kawhi Leonard, the Spurs know a star when they see one and how to capitalize. Plus, the San Antonio and international star connection is strong with Parker, Ginobili, and fellow expert Boris Diaw, who is currently the president of operations for the Metropolitans 92, the French professional team Wembenyama currently plays for. Like I said, this selection is not based on their current roster, however. Some will be harsher than others on the Spurs' young core, but I think there are glimmers to be hopeful about. Forward Keldon Johnson is becoming a dependable scorer. Rookie guard Devin Vessel is already lighting up for almost 19-4-4. Four and, four. and then, a group of solid young guys you could see becoming a respectable sporting cast, with Jakob Pertl, Trey Jones, Joshua Primo, and Zach Collins. Here's the other thing we all know about the Spurs. Greg Popovich is going to squeeze every bit of winning and talent out of that team that he can muster. Say the lower seeds in the play-in tournament is nothing worth getting excited over. If he's gotten them there the past two years with his team, imagine what he can do if this next French star rolls into town. The final two teams are the ones I think, okay, the league's already in trouble in the next two to three years. In runner-up to the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes, I have the Houston Rockets. With players like the 7'3 Boban Marjanovic, Victor will immediately be given the keys for how to dominate as the tallest man in the arena. That's a joke, but I mean, what if I'm right? Vic and Boban. See, they're not the thin towers, they're the automatic wind towers. Besides that, the team has Jalen Green, who is looking like he's about to pop any second with offensive firepower, and Jabari Smith Jr., currently averaging 13.5 points and cracking off almost 9 threes a game. Houston offense could skyrocket to the top if they then acquire Victor's tool set. Although, they might not fully meet my criteria with having centers ready to alleviate the interior punishment. Alfred Sengun and Bruno Fernando can at least suffice for the thought of that offensive trio mentioned earlier. The final team, and my choice for Victor to settle in for the start of his career, is the Detroit Pistons. That's right, it's a safe pick, okay, I know. The one everyone has on their rankings as well. Get over it. Motor City has it all for Wembenyama. The commanding point in Cade Cunningham, the flash scoring in Jaden Ivey, and the bruiser big men in Isaiah Stewart and Nerlens Noel. They even have nice wings with Shadik Bey and the newly acquired Boan Bogdanovic. The team is basically already complete. No nagging injury risk core pieces. No bullheaded coach who wants to stick to vets. They can safely insert Vic into both the offense and defense and let him shine. I think another thing that is important to mention with this team is there seems to be a culture being built within the group of guys. Cade is coming into his own as a leader and adamantly says how Detroit was where he wanted to go during his draft days. Ivy has connections to Detroit because of his mom's days playing for the WNBA team. A small market with young guys that are excited to be there? You can't beat that future. So, let me know where you guys want to see Victor go. Plus, how I was wrong and Boban truly is the key to all of this. Was it one of the high lottery lock teams that didn't make the cut like the Magic or Jazz? Or do you want one of the teams stuck in the middle like the Trailblazers or Wizards to blow it up and go for gold with Vic? I'd love to hear about it. So comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.